Hello and thank you for joining me. This is David Hall with National Instruments. And today we're going to talk about RF power measurements. Now what I have in my hand is the USB 5680. It's a 6 gigahertz true RMS power meter. And today we're going to explain what this does and why you use it. So take a look at the block diagram with me right here. So you, as you can see, I have four devices under test and a single vector signal analyzer. Now obviously, I don't want to buy more vector signal analyzers because it's expensive. So what I can do in this scenario is use switching or a multiplexer to connect each of these dots to my vector signal analyzer. So you can see I can connect the different channels of the MUX and it'll simply measure the output at the COM port of the switch. Now, the problem with this scenario is that we actually have to calibrate the path loss between each device under test and our vector signal analyzer. In fact, there's a lot of different things that can contribute to path or insertion loss. And one of the biggest contributors is switching and cabling. Cabling is actually a pretty big and substantial contributor to insertion loss. So we're actually going to characterize the insertion loss through two similar cables. So to do that, I'll draw on our screen what I have set up with our test instrument. And I have two 4x1 muxes, mux 1, mux 2. And I'm going to generate a CW into the COM port of the first MUX. Now between channel 0, I have a high fidelity, rather short cable. And, in be and between channel 3 of the two MUXs, I have a slightly longer SMA to SMA cable, not as high quality. And we should expect more insertion loss through this second cable than we do the first. Now to measure the actual power, I'm going to connect a power meter right here to the output of the COM port of the second multiplexer. The reason why we use a power meter is because it provides us with the highest accuracy way to measure the power of an RF signal. So to do that, I'll go to the, my little system set up here. You can see I have an RF signal generator on the left. It's generating at 2 gigahertz at a power of 0 dBm. And there it's going through the first series of multiplexers. I have my high fidelity cable on channel 0, going to the second MUX, and then a little less fidelity cable, a little bit longer, going to the second MUX. Now, if our assumptions are correct, we should see more path loss over the second cable than we do the first. Now, of course, to measure this, I simply need to connect my power meter. You can see I have an N-type connector, so I have a little adapter that we can get from mini circuits or anywhere, really, on the COM port of our switch. So I'm simply going to screw this in. Now ideally you'd want to use a torque wrench to get the best accuracy. Uh, for the sake of time we're not going to use one right here. But you can see on your screen if we pan over that we're measuring negative 3.07 dBm. And that is the path lost through our first uh, series of MUXs and the high fidelity cable. Now we'll remember that number, negative 3.07, because what I'm going to do is switch to channel 3 on mul both multiplexers. I'll give this some time to settle out, but we should see it settle to about negative 3.94 dBm. What this tells us is that we see 0.8 dB more of, of insertion loss through our longer cable than we do through the small cable. So what this scenario tells us is that an RF power meter gives us a way to precisely characterize the insertion loss through a series of cabling and switches in an automated test scenario. I want to thank you for joining us, and I hope this was valuable. For more inf information, visit ni.com slash rf.